welcome to another video on Spot On with Shruti. We human beings are visual creatures, aren't we? Right? Well, what I mean is that when we learn anything new, a new idea or a concept, we comprehend it better and more easily when there is a visual representation of that particular concept. Right? And that's exactly what we're going to do on today's video. We will learn how to graph logarithms as a function of x or the variable right so in mathematics what is this function they come in various forms like uh, quadratics exponents trigonometric functions so on and so forth but functions idea in mathematics is very basic and easy it's as simple as here is an input variable or a data point that performs a mathematical operation and whatever the result of that calculation is an output so here's an input mathematical operation that results in an output and that's exactly what a function definition is x the input variable and the oper mathematical operation is a function output variable is going to be y now in layman terms and oftentimes i give this example in my classroom sessions as well to students is think of it this way like you wanted to heat a glass of water in a microwave so the glass of water to be heated is the input that you put inside the microwave and what you get out is the heated water glass of water which is the output the microwave is performing the function of heating wherein you gave in the glass and the output is that glass of water right so that's the simple idea we will also employ transformations to graph these functions so that we incorporate the vertical shapes, horizontal shapes, reflections, and so on and so forth. Let's solve some examples and play around a little bit to understand what this graphical representation is about. All right, I'll see you around. So let's go ahead and get started. Well, as you will recall, uh, on one of the videos, prior videos, I had shown you the basic shape of a logarithmic graph, and that is exactly what you see on the screen. So that is called a parent shape or the shape of a parent function for any logarithmic function before plotting. And when we employ transformation, so all we have to do is know the parent shape, parent shape of a parent function, which is going to be the way you're seeing on the screen right now. And we just incorporate transformations, meaning horizontal vertical shifts or reflections from that parent shape, whether that entire shape picks up and goes to the left or the right depending on which way are we going or up or down and that's how the graphs get plotted whether it's going to be inverted meaning reflected that's another idea so let's go ahead and see some examples we'll start off with a basic shape as you can see on the screen this is a basic shape the parent shape well sorry the shape of a parent function of a logarithmic graph which is usually written as y equal to any base b power x so for example, if this was given as y equal to log to the base 2 of x, we will write this in an exponential form as 2 power y is equal to x. You can either plot the values of y and x, the variety of values, and plot it, and you will still get the same shape, okay? Except that whatever the two results in, so it could be if it, there's a y value of 0, it will be 2 power 0 equal to 1, so x becomes 1. If y value is 1, this is going to be 2 because 2 power 1 is going to be 2. If y value is minus 1, this is 2 minus 1, which is going to be 1 over 2 or 0.5. So for 0, we have a value of 1. Uh, sorry, 1 co coordinate is, please do not confuse the coordinates are flipped here. So 1 comma 0 is going to be here. 2 comma 1 is going to be here. Then we have 0.5 comma minus 1, which is going to be here. Again, we are aligning ourselves to the parent shape that i just showed you right here but that is the parent shape and the way we write transformations this is what it looks like where a means when a is a positive the shape is going to be like the parent function but if a is negative this is going to be flipped it's going to be reflected like that and it's still going to lace around the y-axis so this is minus when it is minus of log to any base b of x all right the h and k these are h for horizontal and k for vertical so h means a horizontal shift but when there is a minus here we are shifting it to the right so meaning if it is an x minus 2 we're shifting two units to the right meaning we take pick up this shape and we shift it to the right 
Okay, this whole shape right here goes two units to the right. It will be like this here. And if it is x plus 2, meaning h value is going to be a negative 2, meaning we will take this entire shape right here and shift the two units to the left. K is a vertical shift meaning going up or down. So same way if this was a 3, plus 3 means a positive means we are going 3 units above. We take that parent shape, pick it up and put it at 3 units above. If it is a minus 3, we take the parent shape, pick it up and take it 3 units down. So minus means down and plus K means up. So these are the basic ideas of reflections. Uh, sorry, transformations that we are going to utilize for plotting. Now, let's take a few basic examples. I have one basic example, again, as I had quoted before. Here is the example written as uh, y equal to log to the base 2 of x. If we write it in exponential form, we get 2 power y equal to x, meaning this is going to be the parent function. The shape actually will be exactly like the basic logarithmic curve and just the number values might slightly change. So when you pick some values for y and calculate x, you will get the values as I have done on the table, as you can see on the screen as well. So for 2, let's go ahead and calculate. This becomes 2 power 2, which is going to be 4. And the coordinate point becomes 4 comma 2. If it is 2 minus 2, this becomes 2 power minus 2, which is going to be 1 over 4. And the coordinate will be 1 over 4 minus 2. When you plot all of these points, this is what the graph looks like, right? It is exactly like the parent function, except for a different switch of values. Now, let's, what if we take this particular graph and shift it one unit, as you can see in this example, we shift it one unit up. So, we don't have any horizontal shift right here. Here, we don't have any h value, meaning x minus h. We don't have any horizontal shift. We only have a vertical shift because of that one present here and it is a plus meaning we will take the parent shape which we plotted in our previous function right here. We will pick this shape, pick it up, take it one unit above. What does that mean? So uh, I have already drawn it here and I will explain the table in a second but let's see the shapes first. So the parent function is given in yellow as you can see this is the parent shape for 2 power y. And we picked it up and took it one unit above. So when you take it one unit above, these are the values we get. And the one in green is going to be that value. All right. Now, if you wanted to draw the table for the same graph, we could do it that way too. So how are we going to do it? Let me show you how you will solve that equation. Let's say we have log to the base 2x plus 1. So first and foremost, we will take y, 1 to the other side. It becomes y minus 1 log to the base 2 of x. Then again, we use the basic definition of logarithms. So the base is 2, base here, everything raised to the power of whatever is present here. And this is the value of x. And all you will do is pick, uh, pick values of y, different values of y, and calculate for x and get your coordinate point. So let's say, let's do these two values right here. If uh, y is 2, so this will be 2 power 2 minus 1 and x will be 2 power 1, which is going to be 2, okay? And the coordinate now becomes 2 comma 2, all right? When y is minus 2, this will result in 2 power minus 2 minus 1, which is 2 power minus 3, meaning we're talking about 1 over 8. The coordinate now is 1 over 8 minus 2. And when you plot all of these values, the green graph is what we get, all right? So meaning the curve has now shifted from the parent function to one unit up, meaning each of these yellow dots has gone one unit above. This has gone here, this has gone here, this has gone here, and this has gone here. And of course, the other values also, they keep going up and up. That's the idea. Now let's take another example and see when we have both uh, a horizontal shift and a vertical shift. So meaning we have uh, this particular graph, the base is 3 here, okay? We, so what you will do is you will plot the basic curve for 3 power y. Okay, so that of course is going to take the parent function shape, all right? Now we have a horizontal shift of 2 units. So basically what you can do is, let's say the 2 units is here, okay? Let's say this was 1. 
So the two units happens here. Ideally it will be three. So we take this and first shift it horizontally two units to the right. And that's what this comes out to be. The vertical shift is three units above this. So each of these points is going to go three units above. So let's say that's here. So we will have uh, everything. Each of these points will be kind of like that. So this is what the curve will look like. Roughly, okay. So you get the idea, right? So you incorporate as long as we know whatever this base is, just plot that first and then incorporate the shifts from there. Now, what happens if this two turns out to be a minus? Let's say I have a minus here and I have that written out also for your reference. Here, you see this? Let's say this is the same thing plus three and we have a minus two. So it will take the shape of the parent function when it is reflected which looks like this we will pick this particular graph shift it again horizontal shift is two units to the right so two units to the right and three units above so let's say three is here so this whole thing goes like that and it will go right here this is three up and two down so it's actually let me get another color here so we know we're talking about this is the final thing so basically just incorporate the parent function and incorporate the shifts thereafter in steps, in sequences, and then you have the responses. So, all right, this is going to be about uh, the graphics and you're more than welcome to test it out on Decimus Graphing Calculator to get a very nice visual of it. Uh, you know, practice on your own. And if you have more questions that you would like for me to solve, please do feel free to let me know and my contact details have of course been provided for your reference. All right, I will see you on the next one now. Bye-bye.